My dear friends, it's certainly been longer than a New York minute, but we're on the road again, and we're off to our beloved France. And today we're going to a town called Egushheim. Egush, Egushheim, I've probably pronounced that wrong. Do I care? No, but let's have a look and see where it is on the world map. Here we are. It's a beautiful town. You're going to love it right there and as any sort of town where it's beautiful there's always a lot of people in summer but i can recommend it it is such a quaint and gorgeous town trapped in time more or less anyway let's get to it check this place out my friends isn't it gorgeous back in time the bees are buzzing and the birds are tweeting the sun is shining and oddie and Odette are on the road again look at this Beautiful. Doesn't look like there's many people at the moment, but suddenly at some stage they all converge. I'm not sure whether it's whether it's shown on this particular clip. Look at this house I found. It's abandoned. I mean, the, the windows, I don't know if it's clear here, but it's, it's caked in, in sort of dust and grime. Place has been empty for a long time. Oh, I wanted to get in. I couldn't. The door was locked. Too many people around. I wouldn't force entry anyway. Couldn't even find out where the back part of it was but wow look at that door i love it i'd love that to be my door i wouldn't want all those people in some of those all those tourists but look at that isn't that fantastic yeah you can see now the people are starting we got there relatively early and suddenly all these tourist buses come in and this is the negative aspects of course of any beautiful quaint town or village people want to check it out but it's not too bad if you can ignore that and just look at the wonderful architecture it's, it's not really bad at all so any of you guys watching this I know it's not everyone's taste these ones some that just like the historical features but for you who are wishing to travel now that the COVID restrictions are more or less over I can certainly recommend this place Look at this church. The reason why I filmed this is this huge bird's nest on top of a stork's nest. <laughs> We've got them around here too on the church, a huge stork's nest. Okay, where we're staying for tonight is in Germany, which is not really far. It's just back over the border from France to a place called Nordheim. We're heading there now. It's not that far from Stuttgart, and we found a lovely little sort of town farmhouse with a courtyard this is nordheim so let's go and check out where we're staying for the night and here we are this is where we're staying tonight isn't that beautiful this is the courtyard and out the back gates there is just pure countryside fantastic if you want peace and quiet i can highly recommend this hotel i'm going to put it up on the screen if Odette can remember where it was I'm sure she can she she has all this information saved I don't I'm hopeless like that this place is hundreds of years old there we go 1690 you know it's probably even earlier than that the basic structure other parts were added on in the following hundreds of years but this is our room uh, our little suite it's beautiful it really really is got air conditioning so it doesn't matter how hot it is outside, and it was hot, you've got air conditioning. The only problem is you can park in the street if you can find a spot. Otherwise, you're gonna might have to park some distance away because there's a lot of people living around the area and they use up the parking and the streets are very small and old. So you can imagine. Yeah, really nice. You have to go up these set of stairs to your room and there's another level up there. You know, where if you have children, they can stay up there. And your room looks into the courtyard. There was nobody else staying here. We were the only guests. I'm sorry, the next day we saw a Belgium couple. We spoke to a very nice Belgium couple uh, having breakfast. Um, but I didn't see or hear them at all. So I'm not sure whether they arrived very late. Look at that beautiful old hand-painted wardrobe. 
and very reasonably priced. I can certainly recommend this place. The only problem is there's nowhere close by to eat a meal in the evening. So you have to travel by car some distance to the next town to, to get your food. It was very good food. It was a very busy restaurant. It was outside. It's very warm. Uh, but yeah, that is a problem. If you don't want to, you know, if you want to have a few wines, uh, you don't want to drive your car, you're stuck. That's the only downside. But beautiful. So, beautiful little towns. All around, all hidden. Hidden gems, my dears. So we're back at the courtyard. And... The elderly owner has put the management of the bed and breakfast in the hands of a very capable German lady. He is French and lives in Paris, and he came to visit while we were staying there. He was doing a bit of, um, bit of, you know, he's quite old, but he's quite fit. He was doing a lot of uh, gardening and stuff, and he has some uh, metal gemstones hidden away. And when I say metal gemstones, we're talking about vintage cars, which we're going to have a look at very soon. These are the balconies where your little suites are. Suites. Look at that. Wouldn't it be fantastic to live back then with all of this horrible technology? I know it was a lot more work. I know, but I think you would have had a lot more peace and satisfaction in your life. As long as there was no horrible war going on around you. That's always the elite and we have to fight for their in their power games. We won't talk about that. Might get demonetized. These are a couple of his cars. Uh, isn't that beautiful? I'd never heard of this make before. It is a... Let us have a look. Hotchkins, or Hotchkiss, sorry. Hotchkiss Paris. Isn't that wonderful? Looks a bit like an old Citroën, doesn't it? Very similar. But I guess a lot of the cars were a similar shape back then. Nice. If you're into vintage cars, that is, I am. And he drives us around. You know, there's some cars he has stored away in other parts, which he doesn't use. Uh, but this one, he, he gets out and about in. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of residences. Stinking rich. Wouldn't it be nice? So, hidden away in here, he has an Adler Trump Jr. Not Trump. Trump Jr. This was a German car based in Frankfurt, which was manufactured in the 1930s. And it's a real barn find, isn't it? He doesn't drive this. He hasn't driven it for several years. I must say, I prefer this car to the other car that he does drive. Uh, this is really quite sweet, isn't it? In I mean, the interior is perfect. Just needs a wash. Beautiful condition. I want it. Why am I speaking French? It is a German car. Because my French accent is just as bad as my German accent. <laughs> Do we care? No, we don't give a damn. Lovely car, though. What a shame it's just sitting in here. I guess it's being preserved. But bird poo on the bonnet is not a good thing, is it? Bird poo is very acidic and can damage the paint. Give it a wash. Get out there and drive it. Love it. I would be flinging around the village with my long scarf like Isadora Duncan. This wine cellar is from the 1600s. Lots of wine here. The lady running the place tells me that the owner doesn't drink at all. So this wine just stays there gathering dust. And he gets lots of presents from people. I don't know why they're giving him wine when he doesn't drink, but they perhaps don't know. So there you go. A cellar from 1600s. Very nice. So, stay tuned for part two, which quite possibly might be tomorrow. And do you remember when we stayed a couple of years back in that French chateau and it had those wonderful old wax mannequins? I really wanted one. I asked the owner and he wasn't willing to sell. Anyway, a few days ago, I got a message on Instagram from a lady in Belgium and she said, after watching my video... She drove all the way there to this chateau and she bought up all the mannequins. I was quite envious because I did want to buy at least one or two. Uh, she must have offered them a price they couldn't refuse and bought a lot. And apparently there were a couple more in the old man's private bedroom suite. 
Ooh la la, here they are now. She managed to get those too. He wanted to keep those, but the son insisted. I must have been a nice price. She travelled back and forth twice from Belgium to France to get these uh, mannequins. They were manufactured by a Parisian artist called Pierre Iman, and there are actually examples of his work in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So he's really well known. Um, she's got a great buy. I mean, these these mannequins were in beautiful condition. She's even travelled as far to England to get them. Uh, so her place must look like an intriguing museum. Anyway, stay tuned for part two, my dear friends. I'm off. Look at these mannequins. Beautiful. If not a little bit creepy, because they're so realistic. <laughs>